If you're looking to get out of the city, Austin Farm Sanctuary out in Page is the place to be. Founder Chris Fullerwig is here to tell us more and to, uh, to introduce us to a new, not crowing at this moment, but could crow at any time, friend. Chris, good morning. Good morning. Thanks this for having me. Is, of course, this is such a cool idea. And so that's the first thing I want to ask you about is that we think so often about rescuing sweet little dogs and kitty cats. But there's a whole world of other animals out there that still need our help. Yeah, yeah, there's tons. And my wife and I had the same thoughts back in 2016. Um, and found ourselves rescuing two goats, and this brought a perspective of the types of animals, roosters, pigs, et cetera, that are you know, in very troubling spaces in the world right now and need us to step up to really be able to help them. And I'm so glad to hear you. You said this off camera. You don't necessarily have to have come from a farm in order to be <laughs> able to help some of these farm animals. <laughs> totally. I was born in Galveston and then grew up in a cul-de-sac in South Houston my whole life. So the first animal I interacted with were those goats and then the pig and then the donkey. And you just learn because we need to act and we'll figure it out along the way. Oh, it's a labor of love. Okay, this lovely gentleman, he's an older man, as yes. you told me, sitting in, in the bin here. This is Galactus, right? This is Galactus. Tell me yeah. about him. Uh, yeah, he was standing up here just a minute for us, but he's now settled in, very comfortable. Uh, so Galactus, we rescued in 2019, very similar to many roosters that kind of have themselves available for rescue. He was just abandoned. Mm. People went to a local store, they bought chicks. Half of them are always gonna be males. Yep. And those half are always in need. And most of the time people just leave them somewhere. Similar really? to dogs and cats, they just leave them as strays. And uh. so we work with local animal control to try to help find them homes. We're at capacity. We have nearly 130 chickens that live at the sanctuary. About 60 of those were from a large cockfighting case. So also another situation that roosters find themselves in a bad position for but they can be very sweet, kind, caring little guys. He's uh, dealt with some foot injuries over the years and you know, is uh, working to recover and repair a little bit of trust in humans as well. It is amazing how many pets he's putting up with. He's, yes. he's a friendly rooster. Yeah, yeah um, very handled. And I, well, you know, I said to you off camera, well, you guys must have fantastic resources because as you indicated, he's, he's had some health conditions, yeah. but really it's the work of you, your wife, and the volunteers who help out, right? Who yeah. get these animals their care. Absolutely, yeah. It's a lot of hands-on from our staff is amazing. We have an ma uh, incredible vet team lead. So our crew is really focused on caring for them because it's tough. Veterinary care for a farm animal is actually really hard. People care about dogs and cats. There's not a whole lot of care. So the advancements in this type of me medical care for a rooster to live a long life isn't priority to many, mm. um, but luckily it is to us and our team. Yeah, absolutely, that's wonderful. Let's talk about your mission. Are you trying to save as many as you can? <laughs> we are trying to maximize our ability to save, and that might not mean everybody at the sanctuary. We care for over 230 animals now, wow. so still our big impact, but we love to have people out and meet the individuals, get to know them on Instagram or social media, so we can save them all through you know, a shared perspective and kindness and compassion towards these types of animals. Well, and I know that they're out there, look at, it looks like they're living the world's happiest life, but you know, could they go still to a good home or do they come to you to kind of live out the rest of their days? Great question. Uh, there are some animals that can go to a, a home, but everybody pra practically who comes to AFS lives out their lives there. You can imagine finding a home for Dexter here is oh. tough, 1200 pound, <laughs> amazing bovine. <laughs> But to have a safe existence, they need sanctuaries most often or not. Yeah. It looks like he's having a chat. Oh. Yeah, yeah. He was telling me to get stop the, with the pictures and go feed him some food, I'm sure. This is <laughs> he, Valentine. He wants his grub, and that's Valentine. How sweet. So you have some bigger animals on site as well. Yeah, we care for about 30 cows and water buffalo. Actually, we've rescued water three buffalo? water buffalo. Yeah, they're pretty, they're pretty incredible to see in person. Wow. Yeah, we rescued them from a dairy in Northern California. Now they're living their best wild herd life. It's pretty cool. Oh my gosh, that's incredible. Okay, you want people to come on out and meet these animals, understand more about them. You've got summer strolls going on. Can yep. you tell me about those? Yeah, so the way that we get people out and beat the heat before it gets too hot in the middle of the days, which luckily it hasn't been, let's get through August, we got this, um, is having people out for sanctuary summer strolls. So you come around 10 or 10.30, take you on a little bit of a group tour, then you get to meander throughout our 95 acres of property 
and see some animals in the process, mm -hmm. um, get to learn their stories and hopefully leave with a little bit of a changed heart towards them. Absolutely. And is this something that you would encourage families to do? You know, I'm thinking about little kids who maybe, maybe they grew up like you did on a cul-de-sac. Exactly. <laughs> and maybe they haven't seen some of these kind of farmyard animals in real, I've certainly never seen a water buffalo. Yeah, um, until they arrived, neither had I. <laughs> it's like, okay, we're getting them off the trailer. Let's see, okay, they're big, all right. You great. have such a big heart. Oh my uh -huh. goodness, welcoming but, everything. But yeah, we'd love to have people out and kiddos are welcome. We've built the sanctuary in a very safe place for the animals and for the people. I have a 19 month old myself and his favorite part is now his own sanctuary stroll. So yeah, oh, bring the kiddos. Goodness. He's gonna be part of the herd. <laughs> this is true. <laughs> Y'all um, also opened an Airstream. The idea is that you want people to be able to come out to the property and glamp, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, we want people to be able to come out and glamp, have more of an immersive experience. It's kind of, you get to see Galactus differently if he becomes your alarm clock in the morning and you get to <laughs> stroll around and wake up late with the piggies. So we'd love for people to join in on that experience. That's so cool. How can someone book? Oh, well, it's a gorgeous bed. How can someone book the Airstream? Uh, so we have it right now where you can send us an email. If you join our newsletter and reach out to us, then we're kind of booking just... Didn't want to get into all the calendar software. We'll just handle this one-on-one. -on one-on-one, -on -one, yeah. I get it. Well, and I'm glad you brought up the idea of roosters crowing because I think that that's a pretty big misconception, right? It's not that they do it at the crack of dawn and that's yeah. it, right? How do roosters crow? Basically always, except for how Galactus is showing us. They, so the reason why people often think roosters are dangerous or mean animals is because they're just very protective over their flock. Uh -huh. And so roosters crow in their situations of anxiety that they're trying to alert the people around them something bad may be happening. He's very comfortable. Galactus doesn't crow that much because he's like, we're all pretty chill. You know, oh. studio, bunch of lights. Come I was going to say, I'm so pleased that he's <laughs> not worried in this situation. Yeah. He's doing a great job. Yeah, he's even chiller than I expected. He's <laughs> falling asleep. Yeah, having a little nap on camera here. Okay, so if someone's watching this morning, they kind of want to get involved. You know, you need kind of this horde of volunteers to get these things done. How can they help you guys out? Totally. Uh, head over to austinfarmsanctuary.org and all of the info is there, but specifically we do have a volunteers page. I mean, our team, our volunteers make such a huge impact. 95 acres, 230 animals. That takes 40 people every week kind of churning through to come and do all of the things. That's very cool. What an awesome idea, Chris. Hats Thank off you. to you. Thank Appreciate you for your time. It. Thank you for having me. Of course. Plan your visit or stay at the farm today. Head to austinfarmsanctuary.org to learn more.